The birds, first let me tell you a little something about our situation. I'm 36 and she's 25. We've been together since she was 18 and I was 28. We met at work and even though we never planned on being anything more than a fling. But after about 9 months of messing around she got pregnant with our first daughter. We decided we would give us a serious go at it, since we both came from divorced parents. We knew we didn't want our kid coming up with two separate families. I left the job where we met shortly after she got pregnant in order to take a higher paying job. A couple months after our daughter was born my father got terminally ill and was living in a different state. So, two to three times a week I would make the six hour drive to go see him immediately after I got out of work. Then turn around and drive back a couple hours later to go back to work or to spend a few hours with my family. While I was logging all these crazy hours and miles one night, I happened I'd log on to our computer and I found that she had been having a cyber affair with her ex. They never met up but she would send him pics and message him all day. I was too tired to and stressed with my dad's situation and having a new baby, that I told her never to do it again or we were done. She cried and swore that she wouldn't. I let it be and moved on. Fast forward two years later and she's pregnant again this time with my son. But there were complications two weeks before he was due and we lost him. We immediately tried to have another baby and she got pregnant almost immediately. We had another beautiful baby girl less than a year after we lost our son. We were both on cloud nine and madly in love, or so I thought. After she went back to work, she started bringing up my ex-assistant manager in conversation from time to time. We're now in September 2014. So, one day I confronted her and asked if she was having an affair with him. And of course, like all cheaters she said no. Since I had no evidence, I dropped the subject. About a month later I happened to notice her receiving a message on her phone from a number with no contact info saying something vague like, of course I liked it. I wanted to find out a little more before I confronted her so I didn't bring it to her attention. The very next day our baby ended up in the ER then transferred and staying in there for a week. So, I never investigated the message and I actually forgot about it because of our daughter's hospital visit. We both took time off but I only took two weeks off to care for our daughter. Because if I don't work the bills don't get paid. So, I went back to work doing a physically demanding job working 12 to 13 a day. After a month my wife went back to work too. My daughter meanwhile has multiple doctor's appointments a week now, but that is a whole other story. From time to time, I notice these random texts on her phone from her saying can I borrow your keys to the wine room, and him saying okay I'll be there right now. But I couldn't prove anything yet because for her job she does actually have to borrow keys to the wine room from managers. It just seemed strange that she would only text this number to ask for the keys and not any other manager. I even checked our phone bill but they only text a couple times a month while at work. So, I still didn't have the proof to bring them down. Fast forward to mid-January my wife tells me my ex-assistant manager found a new job and would be quitting soon. You could tell she wasn't happy about, but she wasn't sad either. He no longer works there and then comes February 19, 2015. I just happened to log on to our phone provider to pay our bill and notice that all of a sudden, she had texted that same number over 300 times in the last week having sent 20 pics messages too. But she always erases all the texts before I get home. When I see this, I know I have her. But I want concrete evidence so I download an app onto her phone that records all texts and pics taken. I want to be able to show her that I have the evidence. But I couldn't wait. I called the number and asked the voice on the other end if this was. And I said his name and he just asked who's this and I told him who I was and he just panicked then hung up. I then called my wife at work and asked her was it merely flirting or did you have an affair w the om and she said there was nothing physical. I then asked her who it was and she said she couldn't tell me. I then asked her if it was because I knew the other person and she said yes. I then said it was, after all, and she said yes, and that they did indeed have slept together. And I asked her if they ever used protection and she said no. And I then asked her if he finished inside of her, she said no. I then asked her if she ever had him in her mouth and she said yes. I then asked if he finished her mouth and she said yes, but she didn't want him to, that he didn't warn her and just let it go. I hung up with her and called the OM back over and over and over and over again until he finally answered. And I asked him why and how long. He swore it only happened twice. Once in December and once in early February. I called him a few names and hung up in anger. My wife called me back multiple times before I decided to answer. Then came the waterworks and all the normal stuff. I don't like him. The bonding was horrible. There's no emotions involved whatsoever. It's just something that happened because it felt good to be wanted physically again by someone else anyone else. It gave her a high she hadn't had in long time. Especially with all the tough times we've endured over the years blah blah blah. I asked where it took place and she said in the wine room downstairs at work, and that it had been going on since September 2014, but that he would put it in her for maybe two minutes then pull out because he was afraid someone would hear and catch them. So, he only finished twice, so from what I can gather he only counted the two times he finished as the affair saying there weren't any other physical encounters with her. The next day I drove to the OM's new job and he was scared when he heard my voice on the other end of the phone when I called his office to tell him I was outside. 
He came outside and started blaming her for everything and then said he was an addict and would have slept with anyone it just so happened my wife was there and willing. That it happened to him so he wanted to get his wife back. That he and his wife have an open relationship but she could only be with women and he could do his thing as long as he didn't get caught. That he cried that whole night and how he begged her to stop every time but she wouldn't and being an addict, he couldn't resist. That since he left the old job, he started going to church and blah 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 but he stuck to his story saying it only happened twice once around Christmas and once about three weeks ago. From text records I can gather it was 2014 and 2015. When I got home, I told her what he said and you could just see her start to upset but didn't say anything. I just told her had she been there she would have punched him just by the stuff he said about her. I didn't lay a finger on him because he's not worth going to jail for and losing my kids. She then repeated her story that it happened a handful of times but that he indeed only finishes twice. So now I have a wife who I love who's cheated on me with someone I knew, who's leaving her job very soon to care for. A baby who has to go to so many different therapy sessions and specialists that would make your head spin and a soon-to-be five-year-old. I don't feel I can leave in good conscience or take my kids from their mother. I've stuck around for now but I haven't fully decided to if I can stick out for the run yet. Here it is seven days later and I've only slept about 12 hours and eaten three to four times. I'm a wreck, I've only worked one day all week. I obsess about the affair, going through this emotional roller coaster. They both called it a play fair, saying there was no feelings involved. Neither ever promised each other anything nor ever had a thought of leaving their spouse. What would have happened if I wouldn't have caught them? Would it have continued and gotten worse considering she was about to have more free time? I am not making excuses at all for my wife. I know she is 100% to blame for what happened. She had every chance to say no to the tryst and had every chance to stop before she got caught. It has rocked my world since I found out and I am completely and utterly devastated. I have to put up front for friends and family because I feel it isn't fair to kids if everyone knows. But she was younger, 18, when we met and young, 20, when we started a family. She's never had a chance to go crazy and sow her oats like most of us do in our early 20s. We have experienced a lot of heartache and loss in a short time which would be difficult for anyone, throw in postpartum, a feeling of her life is passing her by, her young age which leaves her ill-equipped to handle tough situations. She sees and hears about the stories of her friends going to Vegas multiple times, staying up all night playing beer pong, party, talking about new loves, getting degrees, one night stands etc. I remember being that age and hearing stories and saying screw it I want to do this and then going out and doing it, picking up and moving from one state to another without hesitation. I've lived all over California, Nevada, Arizona and was on my way to Hawaii when we found out she was pregnant with our first child. I've had one night stands and party day and night while making new friends and having all these great experiences that have helped form me into the person I am today. A person who is equipped to handle most things thrown his way. And I can look back and say without any hesitation whatsoever, I wouldn't have been able to handle what my wife and I have gone through at her early age. Simple things used to crush me and I would lash out at the world or self-destruct with women and alcohol. So, I can see where she is coming from when she says it felt good to get that rush of experiencing something new and having that excited feeling of someone other than me wanting her. Especially since she has been pregnant three out of the last five years. Her feeling of self-worth was in as low because she doesn't have the body she once had. Guys don't flirt with her like they used to. She doesn't get invited to all these events that her friends throw. I am still trying to make sense of it all and understand everything. I dk how long it's going to be before I can finally close my eyes and not see his penis in her mouth or his penis in her period or be able to close my eyes and not of these waves of emotions come over me anymore. I am going to give her one more chance. She knows what she has to lose if I even think something is going on. We have set up an appointment with a therapist to talk about everything. Our family, our losses, her transgressions, ourselves, everything. If it doesn't work out then at least I can look back with a clear conscience and say I gave it everything I had to make it work and if she doesn't then it's on her at that point. I know I am a good father, husband and man. I am not perfect and I have my momentary lapses in judgment, nothing remotely close to hers. But I always own my mistakes and try to be the person I can be. So, if I end up a single father of two daughters, I'll be ready. Both my daughters all packed up and ready to leave. But then my oldest gave me a kiss and told me she loved me and her mommy and it just broke my heart. I couldn't just give up on my family, just yet. I haven't decided to stay yet, but I do still love her. She has agreed to counseling and we have our first appointment this week. I agree with a lot that is being said with. I have contemplated telling his wife, but I don't know how to get a hold of her. I wanted to get him fired from his new job when I went to confront him, but he literally cried the whole time I was there, lips quivering, tears streaming down his cheeks saying he deserved to lose everything. His new job, his wife etc. that I didn't deserve what happened to me blah 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 after he spent the first part of our conversation playing the victim in the whole thing. I just thought to myself what a worthless coward. I'm a better man than he could ever want to be and I'm better that. I couldn't bring myself to go inside and make a scene. But as time passes, I feel he deserves some kind of retribution. 
because if not he might feel like he got away with it and nothing happened to him. Maybe he'll just keep this cycle going and how many more relationships or marriages will he help destroy? I haven't made any concrete decisions yet except for one. I love my family more than anything and I will do whatever it takes to give kids the best life possible. We've been together for about seven years and have had our ups and downs just like any couple. We've also had our fair share of tragedy too. We lost our son one week before he was due a few years back. Then our very next child, who was born one year after losing our son, was sent to emergency room because of her babysitter. I had a gut feeling as far back as 2010 that she was having Pia but I could only find evidence of her having cyber affairs with strangers and texting with her ex, who lived two hours away only. After I caught her, she swore that was all she was doing that there was no pa with anyone and that she would never do it again. But I always felt in the back of my mind that I missed something. That I missed evidence of a pa, but I messed up and told her how I found out. So, she wised up. Every so often she would act a little strange. She doesn't drive so I have to pick her up from work. So, while waiting for her, her co-workers would ask me how I put up with her and deal with her, without giving me specifics as to why they said that. All they would say is they heard things, but that's all. They wouldn't say what they heard or what they meant. So of course, I would bring it up to her and not tell her who said it. She would always say the same thing. I don't know what they're talking about. Since I work 12 hours a day and have two kids, I don't have time to sit there and monitor every little thing she did. So, I would just drop the subject and move on with our lives. But every so often she would bring up this manager's name a lot for no reason. So I would get this feeling in the pit of my stomach that something was going on between them. But it was always the same answer, no, stop asking if we're having an affair. Fast forward a few years when we have the service for our deceased son, he shows up. I thought it was odd but I was a mess and still had my wife and our oldest daughter to care for. And besides there were other fellow co-workers from her job there too. But he just didn't fit in because he didn't hang out with those co-workers or us. When she went back to work after our son passed the Om's name just kept coming out her mouth every day. In every conversation she would mention the Om. Knowing we had just lost our son I tried not pick fights with her. But it didn't sit right with me that he was her shoulder to cry on, her sympathetic ear she could talk to. She wanted to get pregnant again immediately, but wouldn't really allow me to touch, hold or caress her. But still she got pregnant about four months after our son passed. But she wasn't as excited for this pregnancy as she was the previous. She seemed distant and cold. But I took it as her being nervous considering what our family had just gone through. During the next year or so after we found out she was pregnant, up until four or months after our youngest daughter was born, we were only intimate maybe two to three times total. When our youngest was only six months old, October 2014, she was hurt by her babysitter while we were both at work. When we got the phone call it shook us to our core. We rushed to the ER and were asked multiple questions. And were told CPS and law enforcement were going to get involved and we were suspected of hurting our own daughter. So, we went through that whole ordeal 18 months after our loss of our son. The babysitter admitted to it a week later, but the damage had been done. I ended up working longer hours in order to support our family while my wife took our youngest to three to four appointments a week. But there were three specific days a week that she wouldn't take off from work. No matter what, I would ask her and tell her things, but she would always say there was no one to cover her at work or she had a big event she had to prepare for. So, all appointments, plans, trips etc. had to be worked around these three specific days. So, in February 2015 I had had enough and did some investigation work and found out that she indeed had been having a pee with the OM like I had thought. And those three specific days were the days that they worked together and had been doing their thing while on the clock. It's been about five months since DD and we've done the whole CT and PT thing. We've had more physical relations in the last five months than we had in the last three years combined. We're communicating more etc. but when D-Day came, I asked a ton of questions. And got a lot of honest answers. I asked she had given him and she said yes, she supposedly really hated doing it before him, because I would have to beg. I asked her if she's and she said yes, she always said she supposedly had never done it before either. Because I begged for years and never had it done, I asked if she gave him her ex and she said no, but in an unconvincing way. And I remember a few times when she came home and she complained of it hurt for no reason. I asked if she had given him oil and had slept with him on the day our daughter was rushed to the hospital and she didn't say anything. She just put her head down and cried, which I took as a yes, and I just can't get over that. That even after our daughter was rushed to the hospital and has permanent injuries, she couldn't stop herself from seeing this guy. It took me finding out and confronting her to stop. I confronted the on too and he just cried and swore they only did twice. The only thing that they both agreed on was that my wife put in all the work. He never put in one ounce of effort. He would just show up to work and get paid to have slept with my wife from time to time, if the mood hit her. She says she hated herself after every time but she was addicted to the high she got from the affair. She swears she didn't enjoy it, that she hated herself. She admitted to being the one who brought the subject up when it first started. She admitted to offering herself up to him for nothing. They both said that he would finish pull his pants and go back work. 
He never told thank you, never gave her compliments, never asked for it. I think I'm done with my marriage because I can't deal with the fact that our baby was hurt and her high was more important to her than anything else. Also, that she did things with the OM that she would never do with me. We're really working on our relationship, but I just don't know. Our marriage counselor, my private therapist, and even my personal doctor. I had a nervous breakdown on D-Day, implore me to do everything possible to make it work. But I don't know what to do. I'm afraid to get a DNA test. I don't want to pay alimony and child support if we divorce. I still love and find her attractive. But sometimes I look at her and hate her. I can't stand when she wants to argue about dumb things as if everything is okay. It's 50 over 50 right now whether I stay or go. I'm just at a loss. I know she hasn't had contact with the OM and I know she's sincere in her efforts to repair us. But it might be too late. Majority would say, leave her. Once a cheat always a cheat etc. So, I just needed some time to reflect and think on my own. I truly do appreciate everyone's advice and opinion. I've decided to give it a chance. That way if it doesn't work, I can at least live with myself knowing I truly gave it my all. My kids and family mean everything to me. There is no better feeling than coming home to my girls every day, seeing those smiles and reading them a bedtime story every night. There are just some things that are harder to live with than others. Such like she said they never brought me up. But I was able to use predictive text on her phone and find certain things she said about me. I just punched in certain words on text app and these pattern of words popped up in order. So, I would tap the word and then the very next word and so forth until a period popped up, indicating the end of the sentence. All these communications were before D-Day I have monitored her phone since then and there has been no communication. He found a different job about a month before D-Day. He didn't care about her so he never made an effort to communicate with her after he left. So after about two weeks of no contact and not getting her high she reached out to him and apparently he was afraid of me finding out so she texts him. Stop worrying he will never find out what about happened between us. She also sent him. He doesn't satisfy me like you do. And, I want you to tie me up and punish me. I would never let him do that. There are others but you get the idea. But the hardest thing is, her skills are awesome now. Whereas before they left little to be desired. So, when I do receive gratification, I love it now. But at the same time, it's a trigger. So afterwards, I get withdrawn and distant. It makes her not want to perform that function on me. And the last is, I can't figure out what went through her head when she was offering herself up for nothing. The one thing they could both agree on was she put in all the work. She always brought up the subject of him screwing her. She approached him with the initial idea. She's the one who brought the subject up to him every time she gave herself to him. She was the one who would ask him what he wanted her to do to him. She's the one who initiated all communications. I can tell from old phone bills. Half the time he wouldn't even respond to her texts or calls. She says she just wanted to feel and hear from someone else besides me, how beautiful she was, how special she was, how good she was etc. But he supposedly never said any of those things and never made her feel that way. She supposedly felt mad, disgusted, angry etc. at herself after every physical encounter, but kept going back for the high, which I don't get, which is why she says she couldn't stop after our daughter was injured. I'm not a bad looking guy. In fact, I've been told by a lot of people including her friends and family that I could do better than her, looks wise and personality wise. In my line of work, I deal with a ton of people daily and majority of them are women. And I get hit on semi-regularly but I have never acted on that impulse to be with another woman, since I have been with wife. I just politely bring up my family or might flirt a little then just go on my way. So, I don't understand needing the confirmation from someone else physically, especially having to demean myself to get it. Those are the things that I'm finding the hardest to get over at the moment. Who knows tomorrow it may be something else that pisses me off about the whole thing. She now is a stay-at-home mom to our daughters, especially for our youngest. This was something that was planned out before D-Day. So now I'm the sole provider for my family. If I leave, I will have to pay alimony, child support and still pay for insurance for my family. Because she doesn't work and has to care for our daughter full-time. If I would have known about the affair, I never would have let her quit. And would have been in a better place to leave. She has shown remorse since D-Day and is trying to change. She seems to be clear of the fog and remorseful. Since D-Day some things have come to light from her childhood and she knows those issues need to be worked on. In no way am I saying I forgive her or will I ever forget what she did. That will stay with me forever. But if she is willing to put in the work and try to change and get the help she needs, I'm willing to give it one last chance. I have spoken with people who have gone through similar situations and they say they don't regret staying with their partner one bit. If we can get there, I can see this being worth it. If we can't, I have no one other than myself to blame. I know what the repressions can be and can live with that, because it won't come as a shock or surprise to me next time, if there is a next time. Final update. Well, it has been nearly four years since D-Day. My wife and I are still together. After her affair she tried really hard for about a year, until she got pregnant with our third kid. About four months into the pregnancy things started going back to the way they were before. We went from bonding four to five times a week to twice a week to eventually once a week. 
She went from being very attentive and sweet to being distant. I know she is not having a physical affair since I got injured and have been home unable to work for almost three years now. She never asks me how I'm doing or how I'm feeling, pain-wise or emotionally. I go to doctor appointment regularly by myself and she never asks how they are what was said by the doctors. If I'm lucky we have slept together one to two times a month on a good month. It's as if we're roommates now. We now have four kids, but that's the only connection we have. She goes to sleep without saying anything or giving me a kiss goodnight. We have a cow king bed and she sleeps as close to the edge of the bed on her side as she can. She shows me little to no affection ever, and I am usually caught off guard on the few times every couple of months that she does randomly hug me or kiss me. That she says that it's my fault that she doesn't try more often. If I try to kiss her or show her affection, she says that I'm in her bubble or to stop because of the kids. So, I don't try as often as I would like to anymore either. She puts on a front in public as if we're a loving married couple. I just show up and act how I feel. Don't get me wrong, I get it. We have four kids and have been through a lot in our relationship. But I try to make date nights, go to concerts I know she'll enjoy, dinner to restaurants where I know she'll like the food etc. But the night will start with a fight because she'll find something anything to complain about. Just to make me mad so I won't ask for bonding or have a good time. She'll say things that sound ungrateful, that are hurtful, and then after we fight, she will be as if nothing happened and I will be pissed off the rest of the evening. I won't enjoy the evening at all and she will have the time of her life. Or I will ignore her initial comments and start the night off in a great mood enjoying everything and she will have a sourpuss face hating every moment of that night. So inevitably I get frustrated and I try to talk about it with her and she'll turn it into a so I get upset and end up not enjoying myself and all of a sudden, she'll have a smile the rest of the night having a great time. I tell her I'm unhappy and feel like leaving and she'll ask me if have a good marriage and great kids. I tell her I can't keep feeling lonely and isolated in our marriage. And she always says she doesn't know what I mean. That she loves me and wants to be with me until we're old and wrinkled. That she can't see herself without me. There is a part of me that believes her. Because her father is the same with his partner. He shows them no affection physically, emotionally or spiritually. I've known them almost 10 years and they even lived with us for a year and I have never heard or seen kiss, hug or say I love you. And my wife says that that is how her dad has always been and that he even acts like that towards her and she in turn acts that way towards him too. I tell her that I'm not him and need to be told I love you from time to time. That I need affection that I'm not some robot without feelings. But it always falls on deaf ears. She just says that is who she is and doesn't know how to be touchy-feely. So basically, I'm at a crossroads in our marriage. 50% I want to leave and 50% of the time I can tolerate it. I'm hurt and on disability, we have four young kids, she has no job since she is our children's caregiver. I can't afford to leave but I if I can mentally and emotionally take it anymore. My comment, in this situation, you will get what you tolerate. Frankly, it sounds like your wife is repulsed by you. How would you react if someone that repulsed you tried to kiss you, get in your space, or find reasons to be around you? I would let her go. You know who you married and what her character was. Unfortunately, you didn't move on when you found out. She is what she is. Your life will stay like this for the rest of your marriage. She had an affair where she was the aggressor. She put in just enough effort to keep you from leaving. She gets pregnant another two times, and basically treats you like garbage while saying the marriage is great. Two conclusions, I believe that she has rug swept the affair, is not inclined to do anything more, and you will just be the guy who supports the kids, whether they are yours or not, and pays the bills. Second conclusion, she is not a safe partner. She distorts reality to serve her own agenda. She will have another affair, as she only dealt with the superficial pain of the last one. I seriously recommend that you get a lawyer, and stealthily start segregating funds. You should mentally prepare yourself for a fight, as, to be honest, I believe that your wife has an agenda all of her own, and you are a minor player, if at all. Did you at least impair the future of her OM? I have taken insane amounts of glee, reporting a client's spouse to HR. I have had a nasty phone call from a client's wife screaming at me that she spent 10 years getting the education necessary for her job, and me reporting her got her blacklisted in her industry. And since the court was going to assess her income as if she was working but was the author of her own demise so to speak, she was getting no alimony and her child support would be half. I decided to not be professional in responding to her and basically said that she had a fine future as an escort, as long as the customers carried a white cane and owned a guide dog. I believe your wife drew a line in the sand with her affair, then tried to act with remorse. However, I find it difficult to believe that she regrets anything. Just letting you guys understand what is on the other side if you stay for your family.